Yes, I'm back now. Hello, beautiful people. Hello, it's back. Hello, if you can see me, just say hello, and I'll be glad that you are there with me. Yes, as I was saying, it's beautiful Saturday evening, and this is called the Parenting Essentials, and that is coming to you from the Vision Guide. So thank you for joining me. If you are just joining me today, I'm so glad you're here. Ja, it's right to you there, bro. God bless you. Thank you for joining Facebook. Are you there? Let me know you can hear me audibly so that we can get started. We started a very wonderful series last week, Saturday, Essential Parenting Skills for a Successful Journey in 2024. And I believe, you were, if you were there, I'm sure you had a take home and it's going to be an awesome time as we go deeper today. So I want to know you can hear me. I want to know that I'm audible. You can see me clearly. Then we get started. All right. I'm waiting for you. If you're there, just say hello, hi. And don't forget to share with friends and family if you don't mind. I'm sure you don't want to go on this route alone. You know, something about parenting is when you get it right and you're trying to keep the information from your friends and family, you do yourself no good because they are still going to influence your family, either positive or negative. So I'm glad you're here. Please do well share the video. Call somebody to call somebody that Oye is live. And it's another time for us to share our knowledge, our understanding, to hold hands together on this journey of intentionality in our parenting. I started this wonderful topic last week, Saturday, Essential Parenting Skills for a Successful Journey in 2024. And I was able to ask some genuine questions to parents. And even if you are not a parent, congratulations, because this is the best time you can equip yourself to be intentional in your parenting. To be a parent doesn't just, doesn't just start when you have a baby in your hand, but when you have the mindset, the moment you have decided that one day I'm going to be a mother, one day I'm going to be a father, be single or married, that is the same day, that is the very moment that your parenting journey starts. And you have to be intentional henceforth. And you know, it's, it's, it's so much of a blessing to you, maybe mother in waiting, father in waiting. It's so much of a blessing to you because you're already keeping yourself in anticipation of holding those bundles of joy. You know, it's so great. And uh, it's a great time never thinking, I don't have to be here. It's not for me. It is for you. And it's not going to be a waste of time for you. It's going to worth the time. It will worth the time. All right. So I started that last week, and I said something, and I will keep saying it. Mark my word. You might not see it anywhere. Google might not tell you. AI might not tell you. We might not hear you from any coach. But I will say it with confidence and audacity that parenting is an higher calling. And I said mark that word because you're going to be getting that word in a bigger frame soon. Parenting is an higher calling by Oye. Parenting is an higher calling. Oh, you said it last week. We don't even know why it's an higher calling. Keep on. Just stay right there. You'll find out shortly. It's an higher calling. And I said there's no other way for you to thrive this year. You have to just be purposeful in your journey. You have to be intentional in developing skills that is going to be useful for you in this journey. And I asked a few genuine questions last week. And if you're not here last week, I will advise you to just get the video. Get the video, and it's going to be an awesome time. Bro, I cite you there. Thank you for joining me on Facebook. Please confirm I'm audible, and I'll be glad to hear that. Confirm I'm audible. Please confirm I'm audible. So I had a few crucial questions that you need to ask yourself as parent as you journey through 2024. One of these questions was, do, you, do I genuinely understand the requirements that I need in guiding my children? You know, there are requirements. Uh, there is no manual for parenting. There is a, we are talking about tailored approach. There are principles to follow. There are guidelines to follow when it comes to intentional parenting. You want, to be, you want it to be peaceful. You want it to be like whatever you think you want, intentionality, everything. There are manuals. There are guidelines. They are laid down. They are proven principles that when you follow suit, trust me, you will not miss road on this your journey. So are you genuinely... Uh, do you understand the requirements? Do you think as a parent you understood? 
or you have the full understanding on, are you a skillful parent? That was another question I asked. Are you a skillful parent? Are you skilled enough to parent your children in this evolving global generation? Are you prepared to invest, to put in the effort that is needed for this tangible result you're looking for? It's not going to be an easy task. Uh, it, it is never going to be an easy, easy task. Parenting is work. Parenting is work, full-time work. You have to give something. Either you give your time or you give your children. What are you giving? It is work. Are you prepared? Are you ready to sacrifice, to invest what is needed? The fourth question I asked last week. Thank you, thank you, bro. God bless you. Thank you for the feedback. Am I offering praise for the right reasons? And I explained that in detail last week, so I'm not going to be going in depth. And again, I went to, am I attributing my feelings to my child, uh, to my child or children, placing blame on them? And this is what most of us do as parents, because we are not emotionally intelligent. When we talk about EHI, it is a must on this parenting journey. There is no other way, and this cannot be overemphasized. Are you attributing blame on your children because of your feeling? If you are still the parent, they're always, you know, you, okay, let's say you are on an intentional journey and you said, uh, I am going to be truthful, I am going to apologize when needed, but your apology still comes with, you know, you make me shout, you make me scream, it's because you did this. You still lack that skill called in, uh, emotional intelligence. You lack that skill and you have to get it. You lack the skill of communication. You have to get it. See, all these things I'm going to be mentioning are skills. And these are skills that you can learn. They are skills that can be taught. And we are packaging a whole lot of things for you this year. And I trust, trust me, you don't want to miss any of this. All right. So I went on to the six questions where I stopped last week. And that was, do I have, the real, do I have realistic expectation? I said some things that some people, their expectation on their children is not just only, it's not just that it's not realistic, but it's weird. In fact, in court, it's silly. Your expectation is just to run because of your self ego, because of your community, because of your community of friends. So you are giving pressure on your children because you want to pr prove a point. These are not what I'm talking about. These are just irrelevant expectations. But as a parent, do you think? that your expectations on your children are realistic. Are they realistic? So I'm going to the fourth, uh, seventh point today. So if you don't have your notes with you, please get a journal, get a note. This year, you have to be intentionally intentional in writing things down. One of the secrets of being intentional parent and getting the desired result is for you to always journal down, write down goals, expectations. So you'll be able to tick these ones you have done and the one you're working on. You cannot say I'm intentional. We have discussed about this. What you have said and you've forgotten, there is no writing down. It's not going to work this year. If you are joining this, 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 this journey with us, if you are in this boat with us, you have to get a pen, you have to get a journal and write down. So my seventh question to you today is, are you setting a positive example for for your children to follow. Mm. I mean you that you're looking at me. Ah, uh -uh, yes, you. In case you're just joining me, I want to say welcome, and this is Parenting Essential. It's the home of key strategies to parenting, and this is called the Parenting Essential. Again, from the Vision Guide, we are working on essential skills that is needed for you to journey through 2024. And I'm asking some genuine questions to you from you as parent. If you can answer these questions correctly and you know the answers, then you are ready to learn the skills that is required. So we're on the seventh question, and I said, are you setting examples for your children for them to follow? Do you think the examples you are setting for your children are positive enough? Are they worthy of emulation? Hey, you're telling your child, go tell them I'm not at home. But you're not thinking much about it. Because you know, actually I understand you're tired. Uh -huh. Congratulations. You are tired, you want to rest, people are coming for visit, and you don't want to see them. And so you tell your child, please tell them I'm, I'm, I'm not available. But you're not thinking much of it. It doesn't seem like you are giving a positive vibe to your children. It is, snap, it is time for you to snap out of it and wake up. 
ensure that your examples you laid down are positive enough and it's worthy of emulation. You can't just say, do what I say to you. you don't do what I do. It doesn't work like that in parenting. And this is why I often tell parents when you see uh, you have issues with your children, when I do my counseling and everything, I tell, first, let's forget about the children. Reflect on yourself. These things that you have laid down with my child is this, my dad. Can you just forget about the child? Think about yourself. And that is why what I call thought and check is the must. Ha! If you want to journey through this intentional journey, you have to always do your self-check. I call it self-check. You stop, you check. Is this thing right? Am I really doing it because I feel tired? Is it what I should teach my children? And that is why you have to ensure that you don't just say, you make sure that your laid down principles, what you want your children to do is positive enough. It's worthy of emulation. So many, many of these children, you know, they just, they are victims. They are victims of those, in quote, bad behaviors. And this year, we cannot go on that route. So you have to snap out of it. You have to snap out of it. So take a moment, just do your observation. You see the way you communicate to your children. You even the way you communicate to people. Maybe you have an house help, you have, I don't know, whatever you have in the house. But you're talking to those people rudely. And the goal for the month is manners, effective communication, maybe honor, whatever you're working on. Because we do this step by step. Maybe you are working on honor, effective communication. But yet, you're teaching your children, but they cannot see it in you. Because the person you call your maid in the house is treated like a rag, a trash. You talk to them rudely, no respect, no manners, because you pay their salary. Hi, that is not what we're talking about. So it's time for you to call yourself to order. When you're teaching a skill, you have to get the skill yourself. And you have to be able to model the skills for the children to see. That is when you can say, oh, I've laid down the positive thing for my children to emulate. Are we together? That is where we can say, I've laid down some good role. I'm a good role model. I've set positive example. I, uh, this is what I've said. This is how I'm communicating. The way you talk, the way you talk, be, and some of you, <laughs> I've come for you today. You said you're not talking to them, but your children are seated there, and you are backbiting, talking about people, this, this, that, done, this, that, that. Is that what you are teaching your children? Is that, is that, are those good virtues that they're going to be worthy of emulation? I've, ta I've taken much time. Let me go to the next question. Just think about it for yourself. For yourself. For yourself. What actions did I take today that contributed to empowering my child's independence? What are the actions you are intentionally taking that is contributing to your child's independence? Sometimes we just cage our children, but we are not aware. In the name of man, so intentional. And your children cannot, your eight years cannot go down the street and buy something. Because you know you're afraid. There's something that is going to happen to them. We are changing the role. Let me give you for free. <laughs> what many do in this journey called parenting is to take the place of God and to ask God to parent their children for them. Listen to this again. What many of you are doing is to ask God to parent your children for you. And you want to be the provider of safety. This is an error. Your children are to be parented by you. Hey, I say that again. You are the parent. You are going to parent those children by yourself. <laughs> God is not going to come down to parent those children for you. But God is going to protect them for you. So what you have done is a reversal of role. So you want to keep them inside the house. No, I cannot ask them to go and do something. The word is not safe. The word is, who said the word is safe? Nowhere you saved. No way. No way. There is only safety in God. So hence, you are not allowing your children to learn the new skills they are supposed to learn. To go out another street to buy something. You are saying, oh, he's not safe. Are you the safety? Are you the savior? No. Parent them. Teach them the skill and allow God to protect them. Get me. Underline my word. I am not saying be a careless parent. No. I'm not talking about being careless. I'm talking about those who are already in this boat of intentional parenting, and at least they have clear, they are intentional. They are not taking the point out of context. 
Instagram are we together? So I'm not saying be careless. I'm not saying take unreasonable risks. But take reasonable risks and allow your children to learn their skill according to their age. Let them grow. Allow them to explore. And this take intentionality. That is why you need your journal. Next week, the whole of next week, we are going to be practicing this. You're going to the next week. You're going to buy this. Allow them to, 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 to go to the mall and pay do the payment by themselves. See, these things, if you are not intentional, you will not even realize that you're not teaching nothing. Ah, I'm so intentional. I can't leave my children. They go here, you follow them. They enter here, you follow You are not raising nothing. <laughs> you are not. That's not what we are talking about. You want to shield them. Ooh, my baby, my child, my children. Don't raise unwise children. Raise sensible and sensitive children. Never be worried about, uh, okay, I'm not going there today. And I think I'm giving you too much. So you have to be responsible, be intentional in contributing, in empowering your children independent. Let them be free. You know? Let them use their instincts. Allow them. Don't worry about who. So the other person might not understand what you're doing. You might look stupid to the next person to you. It's not your business. You are in this journey and you know what you're doing. You are intentional in this journey. See, most, most, most of the time we so worry about when I do this, my friends will not understand. They think I'm stupid. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You are not getting it yet. You are not parenting for your friends. You are not parenting for what people will say. Just ensure that you are not using your children as practical. Ensure you're not doing trial by error. You're not sure, but I'll push through. Never use your children as experiments. And that is why I like to always explain this thing so that, oh, oh you said it, we did it. No. Don't quote me wrong. I am not saying you should use your, use your children for trial and error. I am not saying you should use your children for something that is not reasonable. Reasonable is no. But and, uh, allow them, allow them to explore. Allow them to take taxes. Give them tax, responsibility, age-appropriate responsibility. Let them handle things independently. You have seven years old, you don't have peace in your house. They are still children. They, 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 they. You have BP because you have to clean. You have to do this. Let them face it. We don't have all the time. And that is why we have a lot of packaged, practical-based, approved courses this year. <laughs> all right. So you have to be able to allow them, you know, allow them to do all these things by themselves. And you have to show them. You can help them with the phrases, I, I trust you can do it. I believe that you can figure it out. Your child every time. I, I, I'm also a mother. Well, yeah, you're saying your children are perfect. No, no, but I'm not even perfect myself. Douglas of my children are perfect. But we are intentional in this journey. We know where we are heading to. Sometimes they are struggling with something. Mommy, do this. Just ignore. Let them figure it out. You will not always be there. And I tell people, I tell parents when I'm privileged to counsel them, what if you are not here? Like my children will tell me, Mommy, don't say with, what if I'm dead. Say what if you traveled. But the reality of life is people are dying. But we are not going to die. We are not being negative. We are just being realistic. What happens? That child that you're shielding, God forbid, something happened to you. That is not your, I'm not a negative person. I'm just letting us see the reality of what I'm talking about. That child that you're shielding, what is going to happen to that child? You will not die. I will not die. And nobody's going to take our place. And we are not imagining evil. However, I'm telling you, you have to let them face things by themselves. Let them find out. Let them look for solutions by themselves. It might be tough. But please, allow them to do it. Encourage them or push them through. Let them build their confidence, ability to do it. Foster self-confidence. I taught some things last, uh, last year, and I was saying most of us as believers, what we do is allowing our children to fly on our shoulders, spiritual shoulders. We don't know that we are not building them to know God for themselves. If there's something I was so intentional as a child is, this God is my God, not our God. I don't know where I got that word from. I'll tell my parents, this God is my God, not our God. I never generalize God. 
and there's something I'm intentional about is my children knowing God for themselves. But what we do most of the time is, oh, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, I'm an imam, I'm a this, I'm this, that, and that my children are knowing it. They're not, they, they not knowing it. Let them have that personal wings to fly. Give them that wings to fly on their own, not just climbing on your own shoulders, on your own wings, and they are, you think they are flying, but no, you drop down the shoulder and see. Leave them alone and see what is going to happen. All right, what else do you have to ask yourself? What are my top goals as parents? Ask yourself. This is 2024. What are my top goals as parents? Yes, Mrs. Quaker, I cite you there. There is only safety in God. Only safety. Oh, don't switch the role. Enough of this in 2024. At the same time, underline my words, don't be a careless parent. So, as a parent, intending parent, parent in waiting, maybe you're single or you're married, trusting God for the food. I said something in, in my videos years back. I said the children in heaven these days, they are too smart and are, they are not ready to come to anyhow mom or dad. I remember I made this video about three, four years ago, thereabout, and I was saying that they would say, God, I don't want to go to her. She's so, she's, so, she's so cranky. She's not even friendly to those children. I don't want to go. No, 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 no. And that is why a lot of people, I'm not saying you, but a lot of people are delaying their manifestation because they are not ready to receive. You pray, pray, pray. You fast, fast, fast. Maybe that little, little act is just holding you back. Just be nice. Learn the skill. Be nice to others. Those are bonus. They are not part of my point today. Let's continue. Help them to be individuals. Sister Veronica, I cite you there. That's it. We have to help them. It's not going to be easy, but we have to. So what are your goals? Please take your pen if you're with me today. Get a journal. Just try to write these goals down. What are your goals as a parent this year? I'm going to be giving you some goals that you can have. But you have to have your personal goals. What are your top goals in this parenting journey for 2024? One of which can be nurturing and providing, which is, a, you know, you don't have choice. You bought your children clothes and you're saying, I'm doing a lot as parents. What is your job? Hey! <laughs> you want them to, you want them to, I buy, I'm doing a lot. I buy clothes. It's your job. Those are, they're not negotiable. You have to, they can't walk naked. You have to buy them clothes. They have to look good for you and for themselves. So, nurturing and providing, you have to ensure the basic needs are met. What is the most important thing that I always say is for you to love your children? Yes, love, love, love again. You cannot overlove. I said it last week. There is no overloving your children. That's your primary role. And that is when it's going to help you to nurture them appropriately, to provide adequately in the love. You love them, you care. You, you go look after their physical well-being. Ensure their physical well-being are met. Those should be your top priorities, your top goals. Educating and guiding. Ensure that they are not lacking anything educationally. I'm not saying your children go to school in the morning, they do extracurricular lessons, extra math lessons, they come back at 5 a.m., they still come back with homework. They sit down from, they, they add their lunch at 5, 6 o'clock again, you call them, how is the math? That is not education. <laughs> you are not educating them, you are destroying them. Academics is not education. Oh, yeah, it's coming again, right? No. Not you sitting down and they are using three hours, five hours on mathematics. Your child is struggling on math. Can you just push that book away and use the natural things, your environment, to let the child explore? Mathematics skill is not from the book. Your child will not develop mathematics skill from the pen and pencil, no. Exploring the natural environment, playing, critical thinking, that is when these skills are going to develop. I'm not here today for that. Leo, you just move on. Move on. I hope we have parents that have years here. And if you want to know more about that, you can send me a message or wait for what I'm going to be saying later. So, educating and guiding. Supporting your children's education and offering guidance in their personal development. Guide them. Instilling values and morals. This should be your top goals. This year, I want to instill values, morals. How do you instill values that you don't know? Okay, get a pen. 
get a journal. What are your values as a family? What do you stand for? Oh yeah, how do we write values? It's not for free. <laughs> write down what you want to instill values. You want to instill morals. How do I go about that? You might need to find out by yourself. But you cannot instill values and morals when you don't even know the values you stand for. What do you stand for at the period? What are your morals understanding? You have to get it by yourself. Then you can instill it. Supporting your child's education. I've said that already. Sharing, modeling, positive values. You have to model positive values. The values that you both, they are aware that this is our family value. You discuss it, not the one you think they know. Not assumption. They, they should know it, they are 10 years. No, they don't know it. You will teach it. You will say it to them. You sit down together, they look at it, they say they are views. That's the foundation. So you instill by them understanding. That is according to their age, understanding. It must be age appropriate when we are writing values and communication, clear communication to our children. You cannot just bring something that is abstract. They don't even understand what you're saying. That's not what I'm talking about. So you instill values and morals. What are the top values, top goals that you can add to your point this year is fostering independence. And that is similar to what we have said before. So it can be part of your goal now that this year I want to foster independence to my children. I want them to be able to be able to uh, be able to do this by themselves, to be able to take care of themselves, take care of their room, cook, feed themselves. You have to don't put so much per time. We have two points, work on it for two weeks, three weeks. Once you achieve that, you move to the next thing. So you have to be intentional about that. Foster independence, you have to build strong relationships. That can be a top goal. Maybe you see that in your house, you know, there are maybe somebody is doing this, maybe so a child is in the room, another child is in that room, there is no strong relationship, somebody is on the iPad, another person is on the computer. There is, there is no connection. That is a big deal. So you have to build strong relationships. You cannot build strong relationships until you understand what is going to connect the family. You cannot build strong relationships. You might think you have strong relationships with your children now because they are young. But if you lack that skill that is used for connection, you will lose it. For you to build strong relationship with your children, you have to understand what are the connection tool I can use. And that is why this particular tool is coming on next month. I'm going to be sharing more details. If you are interested to join this challenge, it's going to be for one month. Connection tool with your children. So I'm going to be saying more about that because I can't break it down here. And we have comprehensive program that is coming up on connection tool with your children. So this is the most for you to build strong relationship with your children. You have to be able to cultivate that child, uh, parent-child relationship through effective communication. Quality time is a must. How oh, yeah, I'm trying, I don't know how to do this quality time. My teenager is not even responding. You are struggling. No worry. This is already packaged for you. Just do well and, and uh, join the class for next month. All right, I just, that made me remember what I mentioned last week about our Teenagers Fellowship. I'm going to be sharing the screen. Just give me a moment. I will share this screen shortly. I will share that screen. If you have teenagers, please, there is no reason why I don't, your children should not be there. I don't know why your child should not be there. And uh, if you want to have more information about this, just do well, yes, I am sharing the, on Facebook. Let me see if I can do that on Instagram. <laughs> okay, Instagram, I will share. The link will not go through Instagram. So you can come to Facebook later and get that uh, link for your teenager. Please do well, fill the form with them because they have questions to answer by themselves. Let them be part of this. I Trust me, it's going to be a great time for them. I'm trying to pin this. I've shared the link, but I'm trying to pin. Okay. Yes, I think I did. Can you see it, Facebook? All right. So that's the link. Just get the link. Get the link and uh, fill that form with your teenager. Fill, don't do it alone. 
or you do it and ask them the question, but let them be part of it. And if you have more questions of why should my child join this uh, group, why should my child join this fellowship, I'm going to be sending you that one we have. On, uh, I'm not sharing it now, but if you have personal questions, just send us an email or come to our DM, and I'll be sending you why your child should be part of this. All right, we're just going to continue. What are the other top goals that you have to do this year? Encouraging exploration. Allow them to explore. Support, allow and support them to explore in, uh, in their interests. All the students have different interests. However, we can encourage them to explore what is also not their interest, but give them room. Allow them. Allow them. Don't just, don't, don't think you, don't be overprotective. Guidance. I'm not saying be careless. I'll keep saying it. Because a lot of people get this twisted. Allow them to explore. Encourage them to explore. Then promote emotional well-being of your child. Promote it. Let them know a lot of things. You know, some of us need to help ourselves emotionally. And that is why our children are struggling, because we are not balanced emotionally. How can we teach them? This brings us back to emotional intelligence. And this is a very compound talk. And that emotional intelligence course is coming up in April. So mark your calendar. The way you communicate to your children, you are pushing on your trauma to them. No, everything is okay. You are not okay, but you're not aware. <laughs> ah, this is the same way we were brought up, but we survived. You did not survive. It's a trauma that you're pushing on to your children. So for you to be able to promote emotional well-being of your child, you have to have full understanding of yourself first. You have to be emotionally stable. That is when you can promote their well-being. You have to. Setting boundaries. This year set boundaries. If, so if you have boundaries, good. Be intentional to go through with it. But some of you as parents, you do not have boundaries. You lack boundaries. Everything goes. Que sera, sera. You, say, you set the rules. You are the one breaking the rules. So your words are automatically become garbage. Trash. When you say it, it's just like a noise in the ears of your children. Mommy is just ranting. That is just making noise. Because they know that you will never go through with any consequence. So you have to be able to set your boundaries and go through with them. Set your boundaries, go through with them. It is very important for you to move on in this year. Set your boundaries, be positive role model. What are you showing them? Be positive role models. Demonstrate values, I've said that before. Preparing them, prepare them for the future. Let them do something that is going to prepare them for the future. Just like I said about the mathematics, mathematics is good, but let's be real to ourselves. I did engineering and I know what that means. So a lot of uh, uh, engineering mathematics that you did, how many of it is applicable to the skill you need now in life to, survive, uh, to, to be successful in life? I'm not saying be careless with the academics, no. But ensure that you are preparing them for the future. Give them the right skills. Encourage them to grow their skills. Not just letting them sit on the math calculation for 10 hours and they are confused. You have succeeded in confusing your children. In the name of your intention, I hear either A plus or nothing. Either a, so your, math, your ch child is just cramming the math, bringing back A plus to you, and you are very excited, self-ego. You think you are building leaders of tomorrow. No, you are not building leaders of tomorrow. Because the child is just trying to cram and let me just do it for mommy. If it's not A plus, it's nothing. Ensure that your preparation for your children is getting them ready for the future. Reasonable skills, useful skills. Don't just raise children, make sure they are wise. Don't just breed children, make sure they are wise. Make sure they are wise. All right, let's continue, let's continue. If you have questions as I go, please go ahead and drop your question, and I will try to get back to you. Ensure you're raising wise, intelligent children. You have to build them, prepare them for the future. Ensuring their safety and well-being. We've we talked about that already. Facilitating learning and development. Supporting your child's educational journey. You have said that. It is good. And that is to reinforce that I am not telling you to be careless about their education. You have to guide them, but don't just dwell on that. Everything must be balanced. 
everything must be balanced. You have to foster curiosity. Ah, my child is always asking questions. You don't understand. Mommy is this, this. Mommy, you can you better relax to listen to that child so that you know how to equip yourself in responding and giving the right answers. I, I, I get surprised when I see parents or message me and asking why, how they can control their children, asking too much of questions. Hey, if you don't listen to that child, if you think that child is asking too much of questions, that person is ready outside to listen. Is that what you want? Somebody is ready outside to listen. And you don't want to lose your child, trust me. No matter how busy your shadow is, no matter how busy you think your workload is, always give that listening ear. Always listen to that question that you feel is too much. There is wisdom in it. Don't lose your child. Don't lose your child. You have to listen. Please listen to your children. You have to support their personal growth. Support their personal growth. Encourage their skills. Teaching, self, uh, teaching them life skills, cultivating positive, uh, positive self-image. This is who they are, but not really looking like you. But you know within yourself for real, that thing that the child likes is not a problem, but because you have issues with it. Uh, your child loves to draw so much. Oh, yeah, you don't understand. We buy papers. I buy papers a lot. You don't understand. That I think even if I start a factory, will I survive? Do I like to draw? Not really. But because it's not what you like, you are not ready to support their positive self-image. You are not ready to support their life skills. You just want to say, no, it's not allowed because it's a problem to you. Don't do that this year. Support them. Teach them life skills and support their self-image. These are two different things. Teach them life skills and support their self-image positively. As long as it's not a problem, it's not a bad attitude. Don't because of what you think or the burden is given to you or the spending. There's a, there are ways to go about those things. If you think uh, this thing is costing too much of money, you can have a discussion and let children understand what is budget. This is not going to go in our budget for now, but we are working on it. It's going to hold on. But don't just give them pressure because of their own self-image. You have to be intentional about this. Encouraging, encourage uh, love of the world. Encourage them to love others and people around them. <laughs> because you are upset with that person. They are not telling your children. When you see them, don't greet them. Oh, ah, are you seeing that class? I'm sure you don't want to raise your children. What's the time? Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Encourage them to love. Encourage them to love the world. Encourage them to love people around them. Let them understand what is love. Let them understand the importance of love. I think it's a one, it should be top goal. And because you have issues with people, you, you have a lot of issues with people, and you're already selling to these innocent children. When you see this, no, don't greet, just walk away. When you see this, don't do that. <laughs> don't raise this kind of children in 2024. Deliver yourself first so that you can get deliverance for your children. Encourage them in loving. Encourage them to love others. Encourage them to love the world. Encourage them to love people around them. This goal might vary from one person to another. It might vary from one family to another. Individual circumstance might affect the goals. Your culture, your, what is your priority might affect the goals. But just know that you have to understand your own goal for this year. You have to adapt your goal to suit your parenting approach this year. And these are going to be unique to your family. It's going to be unique to you in your parenting journey. So it's not a general, as, as this world is evolving, as we are all moving towards intentionality, uh, we are moving towards journey of intentionality in our parenting. I said something last year. I said, if you don't have goals like this, if you don't know what are your values are, you want to copy family A, you want to copy family B, you want to copy family D. Everybody is intentional, but where we are going is not the same. So if you are following three people because you think they are doing it right in their families, you will get to a point you'll be confused. You know why? They are driving on this highway. That you will get to a point you don't know where to go again because they are not doing the same thing. But these three people are doing the right thing. The three families are not doing the same thing, but these three families are doing the right thing. So that is why you have to know your goals, understand your values by yourself. Any question, you call it a day. Any question, any question, anyone, you have to understand this. 
what are the most essential parenting skills what are the most essential parenting skills we are going to be starting that next week and i will try and rush through this next week so that we can go in details to another point after next week all right i want to say thank you for joining me on instagram madam oj1 god's own it's good to see you here i was talking about you yesterday and i was like oh my mind is with you i need to call you it's good to see you here god bless you god bless you Oluwa Fisayo, thank you for joining me. Uh, Bro Lawrence, I cite you there. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. And everyone I cannot see on my screen, I want to say thank you. Facebook, the device I'm using, I can't really see you, but I know you are there. Mrs. Quaker, I cite you there. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I believe it's not a waste of time for you. And don't forget that the Connection Tool class is coming on. It is going to be the second week of February. This is coming on second week of February. You are struggling. You don't understand your teenager. You don't understand your infant. Or you don't know what next to expect. All you want to equip yourself. Please ensure you register for this class. The link that I shared today on Facebook is not the class for connection tool. It is for the teenagers. And I said this is open from grade, uh, 12 years plus. Once a child has crossed 12 years, almost 13, you can register the child and up to the age of 17. Register your child, and if you want to know details, what exactly are the students going to be doing, I'm going to send you a form, uh, a, an uh, explanation on why your children should join the Visionary Christian Teenagers Fellowship. It is very important, and we're going to be having our monthly meeting on Zoom, and we're going to be having the physical gathering also here in Doha for those who are going to be in Doha. All right, thank you very much for joining me. The link is there. I just uh, advise those on Instagram. I'm not sure I'll be able to share the link. Please get the link on uh, Facebook or you message us on our number. I think the number is on Instagram. Just send hello that you want the link. Please kindly send me the, just a link for the Teenagers Fellowship and I'll share with you when you send us WhatsApp message. Please only WhatsApp, no calls, please. And it's going to be a great time. And for the connection too, if you want to know more about this, you want information now, please look out for it, send message, and I'll be sharing this. And this is, I might not even share the link for that. See, this one, you have to be intentional. You want to get in this act. Please, you're going to message, and you're going to join us on this one month connecting with our children with daily practical experience as a parent to our children. All right, I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining me today. If you're seeing my face for the very first time, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. This is Parenting Essential, and it's coming to you from the Vision Guide. I'm Oye Esther, your parenting coach. And as we go, please be reminded that parenting must be intentional. Parenting must be purposeful, and it must be full of vision. And this vision, eh, the word vision underlined it, vision, it's what is going to carry you through this journey of intentionality to achieve peaceful parenting, to achieve intentional parenting. And I'll see you next week by the grace of God. Don't forget the link has been shared. If you want your child to be part of this teenage fellowship, trust me. And this is basically only solely for Christians. Uh, solely for Christians. Yeah, I have to underline that. If I know we have people on uh, that join our program, they're not Christian. That's fine. But this fellowship is basically for Christians' children. But the connection to is for everybody. Even if you believe in whatever, I don't even know the name. Feel free to join us. Feel free to join us. But this fellowship is for Christian teenagers. All right, thank you once again for joining. And I'm sure you enjoyed yourself. And I'll see you next week on another wonderful episode. Bye for now. I love you. God bless you. God bless you.